Super Mario Odyssey is filled to the brim with content, from its moons to its kingdoms to its captures. But one of the things that makes the game so memorable is its costumes. A lot of these outfits really bring some of Odyssey's environments to life, and there's even a ton of cool references to Mario's past that can be found through them. Whether they were in the base game or added as free updates, there are 58 total costumes in the game, and I'm going to be ranking all of them. However, when ranking these outfits compared to something we've done in the past like kingdoms or captures, it's pretty subjective. I mean, if you really think about it, these costumes don't do anything apart from providing a different aesthetic, so when ranking them, I'm going to be considering a variety of factors, including how creative each costume is, each costume's origin, and how well they fit with their respective kingdom. Obviously, I'm going to have my own personal preferences too, but with that out of the way, let's jump into the ranking, starting with number 58. The Resort Outfit. It's not bad, but it definitely isn't too creative either, and also isn't a cool reference to anything as far as I can tell. It feels really weird ranking it last because I don't hate it at all, it's just kinda forgettable. I don't even recall wearing it ever in-game. At 57, we have the Sailor Outfit. Like with the last costume, I couldn't find any instance of Mario wearing a Sailor suit before this, so it doesn't seem to be a reference to anything, and I'm gonna say that a couple of times. If these outfits are references to something I don't know and couldn't find during research, then I'm gonna assume the reference isn't cool enough to change my general thoughts on the outfit. Like here, maybe it is a reference to something, but it's also just a Sailor Outfit, which is pretty basic compared to a lot of the other costumes. It's just not memorable. Number 56, we have the swimwear. This outfit was actually taken from art used for a 2016 Club Nintendo calendar. It's cool that they reference this calendar, but it's just a generic swimsuit, so it's not a revolutionary costume. The main reason this is so low, however, is because Cappy's eyes cover Mario's eyes since they're attached to the goggles, which is kind of just cursed. Number 55, the you suit, I mean the clown suit. Part of me wants to rank it high because it's kind of funny and has a fair share of memes attached to it, but at the same time, having Mario as a clown is just so weird and a bit creepy to be honest. Because of that, I'm ranking it low simply due to the fact that I did not need to see this Nintendo. I see clown Mario in my nightmares. Number 58 is the captain's hat. This is probably one of the outfits that you think of when you think of Odyssey. Like having Mario pilot the Odyssey with a captain's hat is so fitting. However, it's just a hat. There's no actual outfit to it. I don't think it's fair to rank this too high when comparing it to entire costumes. Number 53 is the black fedora and suit, and I actually like this costume a lot, but it's just pretty generic. It's not a reference to anything, and it makes you just look like every other new donk citizen. Like, it's perfect if you're trying to make a thumbnail for your Frank Sinatra AI Mario voice cover, but that's about it. The musician's outfit is essentially just the same thing, but it's red to match the other outfits of the performers in Polly's band, so it gets extra points for being slightly cooler, and I think it just looks better too. The Conductor outfit is actually a reference to artwork used for Mario Paint's music composition software, which is so cool, but I don't know, there's just something off about this costume. Seeing that wig on this plumber has just never sat well with me. Once again, the snowsuit doesn't seem to be a reference to anything from Mario's past. You could argue it's a reference to Ice Climbers, but eh, not really. It's a snowsuit, and there really isn't too much to say about it. I don't know why this is called the Santa outfit and not the Santa suit, but regardless, we've seen Mario as Santa Claus a few times before, including the same 2016 Club Nintendo calendar and other promotional material, but yeah, I mean, it's Mario as Santa. I don't know about you, but to me, it's cool if you're in the Christmas spirit, as in it's like Christmas or a couple days before, but you can't really use this outfit the other 360 days of the year. Okay, for this one, hear me out. Obviously, Mario has his own baseball series, and he appeared in baseball for the Game Boy. But this seems to just be a normal baseball uniform, which is kind of lame. I mean, the coolest thing about this outfit is that Mario's number on the back says 64. Obviously a reference to the year 1964, when Mario was actually born. But that's really the only interesting thing about this costume. Kinda like this next costume, the football uniform. You could argue this is a reference to Charge and Chuck, but like with the baseball outfit, this just feels like some normal football uniform. Same 64 reference on the jersey, and I'm ranking this one higher because football is way cooler than baseball. There, I said it. Number 46 is the black top hat and suit. We've seen Mario wear a similar outfit on the box art for Super Mario All-Stars. It's cool seeing Mario all dressed up, but this costume is also pretty simplistic at the end of the day. The chef suit comes in at number 45 on this list and is from Yoshi's Cookie, which is a puzzle game where you bake a bunch of cookies. Shocker, I know. I like the costume and I like the reference. There's not really too much more to say about this one. I don't know, whenever I see this one, I can't help but think, okay, what is Mario cooking? Like, for example, we've been cooking up a lot of great videos recently. So if you're hungry for a bunch of high-quality Nintendo content, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you, back to the video. 
Next up, we have the Spirit Suit. And spoiler alert, all next four costumes are Brutal's outfits that were added as DLC. I do think it's cool they added costumes for Odyssey's main and original sub-bosses, but I feel like these guys kind of suffer from the same fate as the Koopalings. The fact that there's too many of them makes them a bit forgettable, and it's not like Odyssey really fleshed them out anyway. They were just kind of there. Anyway, first up is Spirit, because I don't like him. His main attack is projectile vomiting poison at you? That's just gross, man. Number 43 is the Rango suit. I do think the droopy ears are funny, but this guy's just a goober if you ask me. Number 42 is the Harriet suit. Not sure why this isn't called the Harriet dress, but I digress. Of the four costumes, this one's probably the most detailed, making it a bit higher than the other two. And finally at number 41, the Topper suit. It's the highest of the four simply because Topper is the most iconic Brutal. I also love the shiny green top hat and the blazer that comes with, so yeah, this is definitely my favorite of the Brutal outfits. Number 40 is the fashionable outfit, and this costume is actually a very obscure reference to a random 2014 new Nintendo 3DS commercial, which featured a popular J-pop star, and the fact that they referenced this trailer is definitely weird, but also pretty cool, and honestly, I respect it. I can't really rank this outfit any higher though, because in reality, this outfit is just Mario wearing fashionable clothes. It's nothing mind-blowing. Number 39, the Hakama, is yet another outfit that originated from the 2016 Club Nintendo calendar. It's a piece of traditional Japanese clothing, and it works really well with Bowser Kingdom, but also doesn't come with a hat, which definitely hurts its ranking. The Happy Outfit is another set of Japanese clothing, and it also came from the Club Nintendo calendar, who could have guessed? Seriously, this calendar came out in 2016, Odyssey was released in 2017, I wonder at what point of development they were trying to make different costumes for Odyssey. Back to the Happy Outfit, the reason it ranks higher than the Hakama is because it actually comes with a headpiece. <laughs> The cowboy outfit originates from Mario Party 2, where we saw Mario as a cowboy for the first time. It pairs perfectly with the theming of Sand Kingdom, but it's also one of the more basic outfits in Odyssey. Number 36 is the Explorer outfit, and this comes from Mario Picross for the Game Boy. These references are insane! However, just like with the cowboy outfit, it's still one of the more basic outfits from Mario Odyssey. The knight armor is such a cool concept, but it's not really a reference to anything as far as I can tell. Luigi has a team in Mario Super Sluggers that's called the Luigi Knights, and there's knights in the Luigi's Mansion series, but I'm pretty sure this is just a knight costume. The main reason this costume's ranked so low though is because I feel like it was a huge missed opportunity. Realistically, it really should have been paired with the Ruin Kingdom, but it ended up being added in as DLC instead. Number 34 is the Diddy Kong suit. It's neat seeing Diddy Kong getting referenced in a mainline Mario game, and this is also a very funny outfit, but my biggest gripe with this costume is the fact that we didn't get a Donkey Kong outfit. Like seriously, New Donk City is entirely based around the DK Arcade game, you even fight Donkey Kong as a boss, so the fact that we got Diddy instead of him feels so random. Hey, this is also Nintendo canonically putting their own merch in the game, which is really weird to think about. Number 33, the Mario suit. Yep, it's Mario. It's the default outfit from the main game, and that's why it's right here in the middle of the list. I know it's iconic, but like the other outfits are just cooler. We see this all the time. 32 is the gold Mario suit. It's Mario, but gold, so I guess it's slightly better than the Mario suit, but it would be dumb to rank it much higher. You could argue this outfit's from New Super Mario Bros. 2, but I think it's just a golden Mario, like the golden Mario amiibo. 31 is the sombrero and poncho. This is another one of those outfits that really makes you think about Mario Odyssey, especially with how it matches its theming of the Sand Kingdom. It's also a very niche reference, as it's from Kix or Quix on the Game Boy, where Mario had a small cameo where he played a guitar wearing a sombrero and a poncho. It definitely works with Mario Odyssey, but it's not the most creative outfit either, so that's why it's kind of in the middle of the ranking. The aviator outfit is a reference to Sky Pop from Super Mario Land, and while I love the reference, it's also just a pilot's outfit. It's one of the more mediocre costumes overall. The mechanic outfit is pretty mundane, but it's actually a reference to artwork for 3D Hot Rally, which is a game exclusive to the Famicom, and the Famicom logo on Mario's cap is so iconic. The sponsorships that can be seen on Mario's shirt are actually taken from Mario Kart 8's sponsorships too, which is so sick. Number 28 is the racing outfit. Similar to the mechanic outfit, this costume does seem to take some inspiration from 3D Hot Rally, and once again, the logos on the suit are borrowed from Mario Kart 8. I'm giving the racing outfit the spot over the mechanic outfit simply because a racing outfit is just a cooler concept. The golf outfit is essentially just Mario with the American flag pattern, but it gets its name because it's actually taken from NES Open Tournament Golf. It might be fair to say that this one's too high because it's basically a color swap, but what heavily boosts this costume is the fact that it's one of Mario's alts in both Smash 4 and Smash Ultimate. It's kind of iconic. Number 26 is the space suit. It's pretty basic, but pairs so well with Moon Kingdom, and I love that they did that. It's not a particular reference, but I guess Mario wore a space suit in Spaceland for Super Mario Land 2 for the Game Boy. 
The Luigi suit is so bittersweet. It's the closest thing we got to a playable Luigi in Mario Odyssey. Like, Odyssey is such a great game, but multiplayer was a huge missed opportunity. The Luigi suit, while cool, admittedly feels kind of like a slap in the face. You're never gonna believe what this costume's a reference to. For real though, this one gets the spot over the Luigi suit because it just makes more sense as a costume because Wario's not normally playable in mainline Mario games. And finally, the Waluigi suit. I've chosen this one over the other two because I think Waluigi should be in Smash. No, just kidding, he should never. <laughs> but this would be Waluigi's only reference in a mainline Mario game, to my knowledge, which is kind of crazy. We saw Mario as a pirate for the first time in Mario Party 2. The reason this costume's so high is because pirates are awesome. This outfit's also a great fit for the Seaside Kingdom, and from the eye patch to the skull hat, they really went all out with this one. The samurai armor, like the pirate outfit, is just so cool to see. Looking at Mario as a samurai is so legendary, and I actually thought they made this costume specifically for Bowser Kingdom, but yet again, break out your old 2016 Club Nintendo calendar! Yep, it was there too. The classic suit is literally the Mario suit with the color swap. So why is it so much higher? Well, this is actually a reference to Mario's original color scheme from the Donkey Kong arcade game, giving it its name, the classic suit. This is perfect, especially because we have an entire kingdom dedicated to the game through New Donk City. Little references like this are seriously one of the reasons Odyssey is so great. Yabba dabba do, this outfit originates from a random Mario comic that was released in Germany. However, what makes this costume so awesome is the wearable dry bones hat. In my opinion, this isn't one of the most memorable costumes in Odyssey, but it's also such a good interpretation of Mario as a caveman with its level of creativity. The Doctor outfit is obviously a reference to Dr. Mario, and it's just nice seeing spin-offs like that represented in a mainline title. That's why it's ranked so high. The Painter outfit's another reference to a Mario spinoff. I thought it was just Mario Paint, but the beret is taken just from Mario Artist Paint Studio, just when you thought this couldn't be any more niche. The Builder outfit is so iconic, not just from Mario Maker, but also now Smash Ultimate. I love the vibrant yellow and red colors it comes with. It's also perfect how they actually incorporated this into the game by having Mario pretend to be a New Donk City construction worker. The Scientist outfit is definitely one of the weirdest costumes in the game, and I thought they definitely made it with Mario Odyssey and 9, but it's actually from some random Japanese Super Game Boy commercial, which has to be one of the most bizarre references in this game. And as you know, that's saying something, you gotta respect it. Just when you thought things couldn't get much weirder, the Satellaview suit is taken from promotional material for the Super Famicom Satellaview. If you don't know what the Satellaview is, it was an add-on for the Super Famicom only in Japan that would stream you games over what was then kind of the internet. So bizarre, so obscure, and it's kind of iconic too, because the Satellaview is a bit of a meme at this point. So yeah, cool fit. The zombie outfit is not a reference to anything, but clearly a ton of work went into it. It's a perfect interpretation of Mario as a zombie, from the lifeless eyes and torn overalls, to him just casually having an axe sticking out of his head. This feels like it would be fan art. I didn't think Nintendo would go this hard. I'm not sure who asked for this, but I appreciate the effort regardless. The employee uniform is taken from the crazy cap stores scattered all throughout Odyssey. It's such a cool concept with its ridiculous patterns and two hats, but having Mario essentially infiltrate these stores by pretending to be an employee is so funny. Peach's wedding dress has become one of her most iconic outfits, especially in the Mario movie, so while it's a bit surprising to see Mario wearing it, it also oddly works as unlockable content in Mario Odyssey's postgame. But it doesn't beat Bowser's tuxedo. Bowser's tuxedo is sick. Nintendo decided to make Bowser absolutely dripped out in this game for no reason whatsoever. Giving us the power to unlock that costume, including your own Bowser's shell. Man, this costume is perfect. It deserves to be number 10. Number 9, Metal Mario. This is one of the few outfits that actually changes Mario's model. So even though it's just a solid metal color, it's still creative. It's also a reference to one of the most iconic power-ups across the Mario series. So it's one of the coolest costumes in Odyssey for sure. The King's Outfit. What I love about this costume is mainly the fact it's one of the last costumes you get in the game, which is just so fitting. Being able to reach a point where you're so far into the game that you're essentially being crowned a king by the developers feels so awesome, even if this outfit isn't a reference to anything in particular. Mario's Tuxedo. I would argue this is probably the most iconic outfit from Odyssey, and it even ended up being added into Smash Bros. This outfit always reminds me how epic the finale to Odyssey is, where you crash Bowser's wedding, and it holds a special place in my heart as one of the best costumes in Mario Odyssey. 
Number six is the boxer shorts. How can an outfit that practically isn't even an outfit be this high up on the list? Well, it's simply just so funny and hilarious. The fact that they allow you to run around half naked, too funny. I remember how shocked everyone was when this outfit was revealed. This outfit has become such a staple of Mario Odyssey that there's even a speedrun category that's dedicated to this called nipple percent, where you have to buy and equip this outfit as fast as possible. As stupid as this outfit is, it's my list. I'm giving this the number six spot. Mario 64 cap and suit. The reason this outfit is so high is mainly because of nostalgia, but it's simply the perfect tribute to Mario's first 3D appearance. Using this outfit to explore Peach's garden from Mario 64 is such a memorable part of Mario Odyssey. And if we're being honest, the entire Mushroom Kingdom is filled with references to Mario's legacy, and there's really no better costume to pair that kingdom with than this one. Such a cool reference. The skeleton suit is another outfit that completely changes your model, and I guess you could say it gets its origin from Super Mario Galaxy. Mario's skeleton can be seen in that game when you get shocked, but really, it's just a skeleton. It doesn't, it's not, I don't think it's a reference. It's hilarious being able to walk around as a dead version of Mario, but I think one of the reasons Skeleton Mario ranks so high here is because of sunk cost fallacy. Like, come on, I paid 9,999 coins for this outfit, it better at least crack top 5. Number three is the Sunshine, Shades, and Outfit. In Super Mario Sunshine, you could actually wear this outfit after defeating Bowser, which is a neat reference, but this outfit is also really cool in and of itself. Seeing Mario rock the shades is just awesome. This one is so cool. The 8-bit Mario cap turns you into a 3D version of Mario's sprite from Super Mario Bros, and it also makes you completely inanimate. Having Mario stuck in that constant jumping pose is pure gold. One of the things that makes Odyssey such a great game is how it isn't afraid to try new things. And I love how they were willing to make the costume that looks so stupid, simply due to the fact that it's funny and a cool reference. But it doesn't beat out number one, the invisibility hat. I know, I know, put the pitchforks down. The reason this is number one is because when you think about it, this is the only costume in the game that actually does something. You know, apart from letting you go into a room to collect a power move. Not being able to see your model makes the game so much harder since you're left to either focus on your shadow or essentially just guess where you are. It adds such an awesome challenge that Nintendo even reused this concept for one of Super Mario Wonders badges. It's the perfect costume. If you wanna add a little bit of challenge to the game, you can equip the invisibility Hat. It increases replayability. And because of that, I would say, despite being, you know, not a costume, in fact, the exact opposite, like a nothing, like a, there is nothing there, it technically is the best costume in Super Mario Odyssey. But let me know if you hate that take down in the comments below. However, before you get down there, I have two quick questions. One, can you please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already? Longer videos like this take a while and it helps a lot. And two, if you want to learn a hundred weird, obscene, bizarre, and downright crazy Mario facts, you got to click the video on the screen right now. I'm Thomas with the Switched Up signing off. Peace.